untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard game to video. Today I was taking a look at a blue-black zombie stack as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. And the deck features three copies of Necro Duality, the 4-mana Mythic Rare Enchantment, saying whenever a non-token zombie enters a battlefield under our control, create a token that's a copy of that creature. So an incredibly powerful effect that will provide a ton of value over time, can be a little bit slow to get going, so we usually don't have time to deploy two copies of Necro Duality before emptying our hand, so I'm usually happy to draw one copy instead of two, so that's why we only have the three in the deck instead of the full playset. Then another card that has impressed me quite a lot in this deck is Headless Rider, the 3 mana 3-1 three zombie, saying whenever Headless Rider or another non-token zombie we control dies, create a 2-2 black zombie creature token. So this will pretty quickly get out of hand, especially multiples. We do also have a small sacrifice and exploit theme in the deck, which will enable the Headless Rider, and this will also give us a bit of staying power when facing sweeper effects, which is important. Then we also have three copies of Archghoul of Thraben, the 3-2 zombie cleric, saying whenever the Archghoul or another zombie we control dies, look at the top card of your library. If it's a zombie card, we can reveal it and put it into our hand, otherwise we can still decide to put it into our graveyard instead, giving us a little bit of card selection if we don't want to draw land for instance. Then taking a look at the actual exploit creatures in the deck, at 2 mana we've got 2 copies of Skullscab, a 2-2 with exploit, and whenever a creature we control exploits a non-token creature, create a 2-2 black zombie creature token. So when a creature with exploit enters a battlefield, we may sacrifice a creature, so we can even sacrifice the Skullscab to itself if we want to, which will still make a 2-2 zombie token and potentially trigger cards like Headless Rider and Archghoul but ideally we can keep the Skull Scamp around to provide more zombies over time. And turn 2 Skull Scamp curves nicely into a turn 3 Felstinger, the 3-2 Zombie Scorpion with a Death Touch and Exploit, and when Felstinger exploits a creature, target player draws 2 cards and loses 2 life. So for the most part we're going to use this for card advantage, but every now and then it can also finish off an opponent by dealing those last 2 points. So going turn 2 Skull Scab into turn 3 Felstinger lets us potentially sacrifice the Skull Scab, which will still make a 2-2 zombie token, as well as drawing us 2 cards. But even better, we could maybe play a turn 1 Shambling Ghast, a 1-1 zombie that when it dies either makes a treasure or gives a creature minus 1 minus 1 until end of turn. And then turn 2 we can maybe sacrifice it to a Skull Scab, make a treasure, and make an extra zombie token, and then take it from there, maybe ramp into our Necro Duality ahead of schedule. And then our final exploit creature is Overcharged Amalgam, a 3-3 flyer that also has flash, and when the Amalgam exploits a creature, counter target spell, activated ability or triggered ability. So this gives us a very unique effect in our zombie tribal deck, being able to counter expensive spells like Alrun's Epiphany is very important, and also just being an extra flyer can be useful when facing opposing flying creatures. Then at 1 mana we're still playing the full playset of Champion of the Perished, very powerful 1-drop in this deck, a 1-1 one -one that whenever another zombie enters a battlefield under our control, picks up a plus 1 plus 1 counter, and in this version more than ever before, we're making plenty of zombie tokens between our Headless Rider, the extra tokens we get from Necro Duality, so the champion is picking up a ton of plus 1 counters. Then at 2 mana we've got a full playset of Priest of the Haunted Edge, which also informs our mana based decisions here with plenty of snow lands, being able to sacrifice a priest, and then target creature gets minus x minus x until end of turn, where x is the number of snow lands we control, can only be used at sorcery speed. So turn 2 priest into either turn 3 archghoul or headless rider can also provide a lot of value, and the matchups where the opponent may not be playing a ton of creatures where priest is usually a bad card, now we can still at least sacrifice the priest to our various exploit creatures and still get a bit of value out of it. And that's why the priest is so powerful in this deck, being able to have a removal spell that's also zombie that synergizes with the rest of our deck is quite nice. Then we also have two copies of Tainted Adversary, a 2-3 with Death Touch, and when it enters a battlefield we can pay 2 and a black any number of times, and if we do, it enters with that many plus 1 plus 1 counters on it, and twice that many 2-2 black zombie creature tokens with Decayed, so those Decayed zombies can also be used as sacrifice fodder, and the flexibility of Adversary is what makes it so nice, also a great way to grow Champion of the Perished in the late game. And then we've got four copies of Bladestish Scab, 
a 2-3 giving other zombies we control plus 1 plus 0, so a nice way to close out the game once we've got a bit of a board presence, especially nice if we can make multiple copies with Necro Duality. And then last but not least, we've got a singleton copy of Geralt, a visionary stitcher, a 1-4 legendary human wizard, so not a zombie himself, but says zombies we control have flying. So very powerful ability, giving the entire team evasion, can help us block opposing flyers, or potentially just fly over opposing ground creatures to end the game if there's some sort of board stall. And then for one blue mana we can tap Geralt and sacrifice another non-token creature to create an XX blue zombie creature token, where X is the sacrifice creature's toughness, can potentially be a way for us to trigger cards like the Arch Ghoul or Headless Rider as well. And then taking a look at our mana base, we do need plenty of snow lands to enable Priest of the Haunted Edge, which is why we're playing the full playset of Ice Tunnel over some of the other blue-black dual lands, as well as nine snow-covered swamps and six snow-covered islands, and then we also have one copy of Faceless Haven, can turn into a 4-3 creature with Vigilance, with all creature types, including Zombie, so it can also potentially enable some of our synergies. And then also four of the blue-black pathway to give us a little bit more mana fixing, even though I would like to have as many snow lands as possible. Then other cards we could consider playing, at four mana, Draugr Necromancer ties into the snow theme, can exile opposing creatures if they die, and then we can replay them out of exile, although the main problem is that we don't have a ton of ways to remove opposing creatures in this configuration, could address that by playing something like Blood on the Snow, the six mana sweeper, that's another snow payoff, although we do want to be keeping the zombie count as high as possible, especially now with Necro Duality in the deck. Could also be playing Crippling Fear as potentially one-sided sweeper, but same arguments apply there. Would still be a very useful sideboard card if you're playing this in best of three, of course. And then at six mana, there's also the new Cemetery Desecrator. A little bit expensive, but definitely very impactful once it hits the board. So those are just a few more cards that you could consider in your zombie builds. But for now, let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play with a decent hand. Double Champion of the Parish can apply quite a bit of pressure early. If it's a matchup where Priest is good, then that's fine. If not, we can always sacrifice it to Felstinger. Turn one Sentinel. Think I still go Champion Tapland here. As opposed to getting the Priest in play as soon as possible. Although I might end up regretting it here if they had a turn to Magda. It's gonna be a Ranger class instead. And another Sentinel. Alright, so play Priests. Attack. Get a second blue out there for the Amalgam. And they could play a Chariot here. Yep, there it is. Okay, so what's my plan here? I could pass with Overcharged Amalgam available. I don't hate that idea, as opposed to... Being mana inefficient with a Felstinger or Priest, and there's nothing I really want to kill with Priest of Haunted Edge yet. So if our opponent plays like a 5 mana Goldspan Dragon, and we can maybe counter it. Opponent's gonna level up Ranger class instead. Could still maybe set up an ambush by growing the champions at instant speed with the Amalgam. And the Ranger class to play. Yeah, I mean, I could counter that, sag the Priest, that's probably fine. Because I do want to make use of my mana here, can't really afford to pass and not do anything. And then I'll happily trade for Chariots, if that attacks. Another Sentinel, putting down to one card in hand. And 
no attacks. Okay, can double spell Priest and Scab. We only have the two snow lands in play at the moment, so the Priest is not looking great. Which is also part of why I didn't mind sacking it to the Amalgam. Alright, and then... We can get pretty aggressive here. I might want to leave the 7-6 on defense so it can block a chariot that gets a counter. But send in Amalgam and the 6-5 Champion of the Perished. And I'm fine if they triple block. Alright, if they're accruing chariot it means they might have another one. But if our opponent's play next turn is just chariots, then I'm pretty happy. Felstinger can sacrifice priest and keep digging. There's also a chance it could deal the last two points of damage. If we can get two more attacks in with the Amalgam. It's going to be another Ranger class instead. And I guess they could still have a Chariot here, too. Nope, it's going to be a Stormseeker instead. That's fine. So they don't have any good attacks into my Champion of the Perished, doing a good job on defense. And it's probably going to stay on defense for the foreseeable future. Skullscab is interesting. Yeah, if we draw one more Snowland, Priest could kill Stormseeker, although I don't think it's really a, an issue at the moment. So I think we Felstinger, Sack, Priests, even if we miss out on a bit of Scab value. And then an extra Death Touch creature will also come in handy, potentially. Alright, no land, sadly, but we get to it for four. And then next turn... We could maybe close out the game, although Sentinels could always block. Yeah, Red-Green doesn't have an easy time getting past an 8-7 creature. Flying over it is probably their best bet. So hopefully they don't find a dragon here. And of course, a removal spell will also buy them a lot of time. Do have a back of Amalgam, luckily. So our opponent can level up Ranger class, either to level 2 or level 3. Goes for level 3. Alright. So... Probably just going to pass with Overcharged Amalgam available. Could try and attack with Champion of the Parish tier, force them to jump with the token. Which may or may not be worth it. Would let them attack on the way back and maybe pick up some plus one counters. I think attacking is fine. Now that there's no chariots. And then we'll pass it back. It is night time, so the slasher is scary. Best case scenario, opponent taps out with the Sentinels here to cast something big, we counter it, and uh, the Amalgam can win us the game, and that's exactly what happened. Alright, Sax Tinger, counter Goldspan, and next turn the Scab will make this 5 powered and close out the game for us. So, our opponent could not have played a better card for us there. Which is not something you often say when talking about Goldspan Dragon. Geralf also would have been a nice way to end it here. I guess it's a little bit more stylish than uh, Blades this Cab. Alright, sweet. On to the next one.
All right, we're on the play with a fine hand if we're facing a creature deck. Double priest with plenty of snow lands. Can maybe wait to play adversary until after getting necro duality in play. Let's see what we're up against. Turn one mountain. I think I still lead with priest here. Picked up a second necro duality, so our late game's taken care of, assuming we can draw an extra land and a couple extra creatures, maybe. So spike field hazard, so points towards a more controlling deck, I would say. Do I want to play Adversary now or wait until after Necro Duality? I guess I'll wait. Can also maybe play it at 5 mana, make a few extra Decade tokens, which significantly increases our pressure. Priest might not be killing many creatures in this matchup, but we can always exploit it later. Opponent passes. So... If we fear a counterspell, we could activate Haven, but then removal spells are kind of problematic. So I think we jam Necro Duality, get it countered most likely. And then we've got a second one coming up. They don't have double blue at least, but could still be a divide by zero. Or a Jory Disruption. And there's a divide by zero. So yeah, drawing double priest in this matchup is not where we want it to be. We wanted some early pressure instead. So we're giving the opponent a little bit too much time to set up. Alright, Champion of the Perished is actually not bad. If I can play it after resolving Necro Duality. I'm probably going for a windfall end of turn. And then next turn, if we can follow up with Tainted Adversary, the champions could become quite large indeed. Could also see Burn the House down to wipe the board. Not much I can do about that one. And there's the unexpected windfall. Although, in this case, it was a little bit expected. So next turn we could maybe see a copied Alrun's Epiphany. Ooh, wow, Cyclone Summoner instead. Bouncing everything I have. Well, we got a rebuild. So Necro Duality... Still kind of lacking Champion of the Perished, but there's an argument for playing Tainted Adversary instead. So now if they have a Sweeper, they can actually apply quite a bit of pressure. At least they had to use some of their treasures, so Epiphany getting copied is less of a concern. Opponent actually discarding an Alrun's Epiphany here. So they might have a couple more in hand. Or they're just digging for author interaction. Alright, looks like I'm gonna get to untap with my champions. Opponent keeps Summoner on defense. And, uh... Yeah, might be worth it to... Play another Necro Duality here. Or I could go for Tainted Adversary and pay the extra mana. Let's go with Necro Duality into Priest of Haunted Edge, I think. Because I don't know if necessarily playing an Adversary here is going to be good enough. Of course, now if they counter the Priest, we don't get any triggers. But they don't. So plenty of removal in play, although 
burns the house down would still wipe them all up. So that's the main concern. One foretells what is most likely an epiphany. And another Cyclone Summoner. Yeah, that's probably going to be too much for us to deal with. Take seven, Pun can take an extra turn. And uh, between that and the Hall of the Storm Giants, it's going to be a bit too much stuff for us to get past. Now, I can play Necro Duality into Champion of the Perished, into Copy and Adversary as well, which does line up well against Summoner at least. But I'm still afraid it's not going to be enough. If they don't have any interaction, we might still be okay. But a rebuke deals with one of them. They still have the six mana for Alrun's Epiphany. And then if they have another removal spell for the second adversary, we're in trouble. But it seems like we're going to get a chance to trade off. So I could double block and trade. And then next turn we're only taking 9 damage. And then we'll need to find an answer to the birds eventually, but this is probably the best I can do for now. Most likely dead to another epiphany here. Yep. So now we're taking two, then four plus seven is eleven. So that'll be exaxes. Yeah, opponent cast a lot of seven drops this game. Sadly, no zombie wizards to keep in play with a cyclone summoner trigger. GG's, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, with a decent hand if we're facing a creature deck. Double Priest into Arch Ghoul. Can uh, provide a bit of value, and then can always sacrifice Priest to Felstinger as well if needed. Cheryl for flying can also be useful against Mono Whites. Seems like Red White instead. So, could take out Fireblade Charger. It's not the highest value target necessarily. So, I could wait. And then for now, probably play the Arch Ghoul anyway. Because I don't want to sack Priest to the Felstinger. And hope they don't kill the Arch Ghoul here. But if they do, so be it. Spellbinder to have a look. Got a pretty redundant hands. Might go for Jarolf. So Priest can answer Spellbinder. And uh, maybe provide a bit of value with the Arch Ghoul. And then I could also Felstinger to get some more value. I guess we will Priest first. And then we'll draw. And then I'll Stinger just to try and hit my land drop. And then I want to draw and lose two before the Thraven trigger, I think. Or do I? If there's a land on top, I guess I'll just keep it and draw it. If there's a zombie on top, this is better. 
So I guess this order is fine. Alright, zombie on top. Can we draw a swamp? We can, nice. Alright, so that was a decent turn. Still missing double blue for Amalgam, but we've got more card draw coming up to help. Legion Angel will provide a steady stream of flyers. Luckily we have Jarolf to eventually give us an army of flying zombies as well. So that's going to be important. For now, I could go Priests plus Scab. Giving me removal and setting up future exploit cards and I can play a, a tap land. So I can maybe play Amalgam as well. And then I wouldn't be exploiting anything, I don't think. Could sag the scab itself. But I think we'll have more exploit in the future here, so... Should be able to get more tokens out of it. Ooh, Blade Historian for double strike. I'm going to have to take out. So we're down to 10. Alright, so Priest kills Blade Historian. And then I've got a couple options. Draw the scab. So the Arch School's done a lot of work for us. So I could play a scab and still have Amalgam available. That seems decent. So I don't have enough blue mana to Amalgam plus scab. Kind of uh, miscounted my mana slightly. Hmm, it's a little awkward. I guess I just pass with Amalgam up now. Should have played my tap land instead. Yeah, I can take it from Legion Angel, counter the next one. I guess uh, that's the play. They're probably not going to play Legion Angel now. Alright, they do, so I'm pretty happy with this. And then I'll sag the scab itself. Draw that one. Yeah, my mistake was not playing the Ice Tunnel tapped last turn. Another Charger is fine. But luckily drew an island. So we stopped the Legion Angel train, and now it seems like we're going to be able to take over. So let's sequence my lands properly now. I can play Jarl for flying. Scamp for pressure. And can maybe even start swinging. Just have to be a little careful, they can't like play a Blade Historian, kill Jarl somehow to make me lose flying. But uh, yeah, this seems like a nice healthy attack. If they play a Blade Historian, I should still be fine. They probably saved up an Angel Fire Ignition in hand, but we should be able to weather the storm here. And yeah, there it is, Angel Fire Ignition. And a double ignition, so opponent's gonna gain eight. No sense in blocking since it's indestructible and trample. So I'll go to two, and then next turn, opponent's at 14. They block here. Take six, 10, 13. And then I can finish them off with a Fell Stinger. That sounds good. Scab would also do it. I guess we can do both, but... Attack with all. Opponent has to block champion. And then they still take 17. But the Felstinger play to deal them 2 damage also would have worked. Sweet, on to the next one. All right, we're on the draw, and hand seems keepable. 
up against Mono White. Shambling Gas is not a bad turn one play. So if they play turn two Aspirant, then I think I still prefer Gas turn one over Scamp turn two. Although ideally I can wait to block until I've got a Headless Rider in play. So if I play Gas and her opponent attacks, what do I do? Probably take it. At that point I think I aim for uh, Tap Land turn one instead. Opponent's gonna boost. Pretty happy with that. Turn two play. So... Play Scab. Haven makes it a little difficult to double spell next turn, but I'm probably more interested in playing their Rider first. Ooh, welcoming Vampire, powerful new addition. Can draw the opponent a lot of cards. Drew Ice Tunnel. So, now I've got an interesting choice. I could make sure I can play Necro Duality on Curve. The main concern is like a Skyclave Apparition exiling it, that would be quite backbreaking. And then now, just play another Scab, I suppose. Yeah, there's Skyclave, so glad they played it now instead of potentially on the Necro Duality. Scab still blocks Usher at least, so we take two. Yeah, the card draw from Welcoming Vampire is gonna add up. Priest is a way to answer it. I think I take the risk of playing the enchantment, hope they don't have another Skyclave, and then this can help us take over as opposed to playing Priest and hoping to kill the Welcoming Vampire next turn. Alright. We're happy to play a, a grindy game against the White Aggressive deck, but uh, we'll need our Necro Duality to survive. Alright, Brutal Cathar. Thanks, I'll scam, draws a card. But it looks like our enchantment will survive. So now we have to hopefully draw land so we can double spell Rider and Priest. Alright, so... Can make that play. And then Priest with double Headless Rider in play can make a lot of zombie tokens as well. So this is the critical turn, and if things stay as they are, we should be able to pull ahead. If they can answer Headless Rider, then they might be able to keep up the pressure here. It's gonna be Protector Shields. That's fine, I think. We'll have to pay a bit of mana to kill stuff with Priest. The Protector Shield prevents one damage, but it doesn't save from the minus X minus X, so Force No Lands is enough to kill Welcoming Vampire. Just have to pay one extra mana here. So I'll sag the Priests to get the Zombie Tokens. And pay the one mana. Welcoming Vampire down. And then if we kill Brutal Cathar, we get double Blades this cab as well. So that seems nice. Pay the one. Gerald for flying. And double Ghasts. And these can attack. Alright, so we might have turned it around here, especially if Jarulf survives. Can easily attack for lethal next turn. Brutal Cathar goes after Jarulf. But we're still looking at a pretty dominant board state. Faceless Haven can also attack. 
So, let's see if I animate Haven, attack with everyone. I am at 5, so I have to be a little bit careful. Opponent's got 6 blockers. 3, 4, 5, 6. Yeah, I don't quite have lethal, but I would force a lot of blocks, which is good with Headless Rider in play. So can my opponent survive and crack back for lethal is a question. I think my opponent might have just enough to survive and attack back, but we will also make some zombies in the process. So I think I still go for it. Because I don't want this game to drag on and my opponent to draw a flyer. Alright, let's hope for the best. So right now with the Headless Rider dying, I would get additional tokens as well. So we're not in any danger of dying unless our opponent can give their team flying with like a all of the Skyclaves. So that's what we want to avoid. Welcoming Vampire's fine. And Adversary. Alright, I think we did it. So close game. Welcoming Vampire did a good job early on to fuel my opponent's draw. But uh, they didn't have an answer left for Necroduality, and Necroduality saves the day. So I'm glad we got to see our enchantment and especially the Headless Rider in action here in our final game. So yeah, overall, blue-black zombies. It has some legs to it, I feel. Or I guess some zombies might not have legs. But... Uh, the new additions definitely improved the deck significantly. A few copies of Necroduality go a long way, and then Headless Rider especially has done a lot of work in testing as well. So pretty happy with how the decks perform today. Of course, still going to be unfavored against the various Epiphany combo decks in the format, although additional copies of Overcharge Amalgam could potentially help out there. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. You can always become a patron to have a say in which deck gets voted for next. So if there's a deck you would really like to see in action, make sure to become a patron and cast your vote. But for now, I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.